My G87 M2 with only 4,000 miles has been experiencing a very weird issue that has left me extremely confused. Every time the car comes to a stop, the entire car starts to vibrate. Oh my God, that was even worse than the last one. I took it to the BMW dealership only to be turned away because of what they called questionable modifications. And because of that, they couldn't properly diagnose the car. I was instructed to remove the spacers and stud conversion because that might be the reason for the vibration. I uninstalled them and brought the car back with the issues still present and was told to take off the carbon strut tower braces because incorrect preload can cause issues. I swapped out the strut tower braces for the OEM ones and at no surprise the vibration did not go away. After bringing it in for the third time the dealer told me to remove the height adjustable springs which I chose not to do. So I said screw it, I'll take matters into my own hands. We're going to take things one step at a time. We'll try out the least expensive possible fix and then we'll move on to the most expensive. And this is the cheapest solution. Free brake pads. These are OEM ones. It came off a customer's G80 M3. He was actually upgrading to Carbotech, which is probably a brand that I'm going to be considering to do for the M2 later on. Them or EBC, but EBC seems to always be out of stock for the front ones. Anyways, I did notice something. These brake pads, OEM ones, only get about a thousand miles on them. And they're very cakey. Seems like they've fallen apart for whatever reason. I do know that like BMW switched over to like a softer compound with their newer M cars, but there's two big cons. A lot of people are experiencing the issue that I'm experiencing where the car vibrates up front. Also, you get some freaking loud ass squealing like a big ass train trying to stop. I know a lot of you guys were commenting ABS, 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 ABS. I really think this is the issue. I don't think it's an ABS thing, but that'll be the following solution we try if the brake pads doesn't fix the issue. And then lastly would be the rotors, which are very expensive and I do not want to replace. Let's get these brake pads on and see uh, if it gets any better. Not sure how many of you guys knew, Brembo is actually the manufacturer for the big brake kits for the, for the M cars. So I can't really blame BMW. I gotta blame Brembo for this situation. Kind of, kind of. I don't know. Blame BMW or blame Rambo? <laughs> Bro, these calipers are freaking massive. They look great, but they don't seem to work very well. To remove these brake pads, uh, you have two pins, so you'll knock those out right here. Then you got two 14 millimeter nuts right here, one here, one here, and that should release it, so then we can go from the inside and swap them out. I wonder if I can do this with one hand. <laughs> uh, no. Bro, what is this? Look at, the, look at the two surfaces. This is glazed. So M3 ones, M2 ones, they don't look identical. The more I looked at the M2 pads, the more curious I became. Why didn't they have the weights and the cut in the middle like the G80 M3 pads? Was that a way to cut costs or is just a lower tier pad for the M2? Like you got little spots right here where it's starting to like chunk off. Hey, yeah, you see that? It just comes off. You can kind of see it. Very weird. I thought it was the same calipers and brakes and rotors for the M2, M3, and M4. But for whatever reason, it seems like the M2 got different ones. Inspecting the rotors also left me with more questions than answers. Probably super hard to tell on camera, but light waves were present on the surface of the rotor. I would say something like that would be normal for a high mileage rotor, but for a brand new car, I really don't know about that. I started to think to myself, were the rotors messing up the pads? Causing uneven wear which led to the vibration the car was experiencing? I'm not an expert when it comes to brakes, so I'm not entirely sure. I do the other side off camera and then we'll take the car for a drive and see if it improves anything. So I've been driving for a good six minutes. Typically the vibration starts to come in after you brake a few times and you heat up uh, the braking system. In general, so far, don't seem to have the vibration. It is raining really hard out here today and I'm not sure if that's, you know, that's kind of interfering with the experiment. I don't know, I'm gonna try to brake a few more times and see if we get any noise. More vibration. Very smooth. 
No vibration, no sound. Seemed pretty normal to me. I do remember driving my car with the stock pads and when it rained, it didn't really do it as much. So that could be why. So I'm definitely gonna have to test the braking again when it's not raining. So possibly tomorrow. We'll try to stop one more time and see uh, if we get anything. Again, no vibration. Absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. So it's been a couple days, a few hundred miles, and no vibration, no noise. All right, coming to a stop. Yep, zero vibration. I am so confused. Are the pads the issue and that fixes everything, or are the rotors the issue with the small amount of waviness and then they're damaging the pad's surface over time, which causes the vibration? I can say this for certain though, it's definitely not ABS related, so we can eliminate all those comments that were left in the previous video. And it's a good try, I thought about it as well, but it's clearly a rotor slash brake pad issue over here. I think only time can tell let's say i rock these oem pads for now if it starts giving me the issue eventually is it the rotor that caused that or the pads are just bad for factory or i don't know i'll update you guys when i have an update so i'm on my way to the bmw dealership uh talk to the foreman there told him about my findings with the swapping out the brake pads not doing the vibration anymore and the rotors feeling like a bit wavy told me to bring the car so you can see it kind of have the feeling they don't really like me too much over there because uh maybe because of the video that i made but i really wasn't talking i was more so upset at the situation even though it's technically my fault for modding a car that is under warranty but curious to see what they're gonna say <laughs> it's funny because now the car has wheels and it has an aero kit so ugh. added more fuel to the fire there Anyways, I'll report back. Now, foreman drove my car. We went for a pretty lengthy drive so we can test out the brakes and he saw that there's no more vibration after the brake pad change. So uh, he said he'll get back to me. So hopefully we get some good news. So here's the latest unfortunate update. Went over to the BMW dealership, brought the M2, told the foreman there that's been helping me out through this entire process that, uh, that the brake pad fixed the issue, but that I had a concern that the rotors were compromised since I felt a little bit of wave on them. I didn't think that was normal for 4,000 miles and that the vibration might come back again once that rotor destroys that pad that I just put onto the car. He drove the car for about 20 minutes, saw that even with the mods, there's no vibration. So no, it wasn't the strut tower braces or the spacers or the wheel stud conversion or anything like that. And he asked me like five times if it was OEM pads that I swapped in, OEM pads, OEM pads. I told him, yes, yes, yes. I'm not sure if he was doubting me. And then if it fixed the issue, bring it back to you and you would try to either reimburse me or figure something out. He said he, was, he would document this, send it over to his TSA agent and he would reach back out. A few days later, he tells me to bring the car back so they can inspect it. And I'm under the assumption they're gonna put the car in the lift, take the wheels off, inspect the brakes, maybe measure the rotor, look at the pads or whatever. Cause I even, include, I even left the OEM pads in the trunk. I told him that. Left it there overnight. I got a call the next day to pick up the car. It's ready to pick up. Not a lot of information was given to me. I get there and the paperwork says it was inspected, documented as they were supposed to do and that no repairs were necessary. So I was a little bit confused at this time and I uh, texted the foreman and hey, can you elaborate on what's going on? Well, it turns out that they had my car at the dealership, not really to look at the brakes or the rotors or anything like that. The car was there so they can fully document all the mods in the car, videos, and pictures so they can submit that over to BMW. I feel like I got played. I know I have no right to be upset here because at the end of the day, I modify a brand new car. But that is some snake stuff right there. I thought he told me to bring it in so they can look at the stuff now that we know it was the brakes and that is totally unrelated to the suspension, the strut tire braces or whatever it had on before like the spacers and studs. Typically, if you have a failure point on a car, and it's uh, unrelated to whatever modifications you have on it. They can't really decline warranty and they can't really void your warranty unless they can prove that the modifications ruin said part. And that this point going forward, they're not able to do anything for my car. 
So at this point, I was extremely upset. I spent a lot of time bringing the car over there, obviously changing out the modifications and all that stuff. And I gave in, I said, all right, I'll bring the car back to stock. Just take care of the brakes. I don't want to buy brand new rotors at $1,000 each. I'll let you know, them take care of it. He told me, not even if you bring your stock, we're no longer able to do anything about your car in that issue. Apparently BMW got involved and said uh, that there's video proof on YouTube of me modifying the M2. And for that reason, they're not able to do anything. I kind of figured when I released that one video, when I first talked to you guys about the issue and said that BMW wouldn't fix it, I figured somebody from BMW would see that and probably wouldn't like it. And at this point, they're subscribed to the channel probably with the notifications on and they're just watching every step of the way what I'm doing to the car. So yeah, they're not gonna address my brakes. They're not gonna address the rotors, the pads or anything like that. And they told me to go contact customer relations because at this point there is nothing that they can do. It sucks. Again, my fault for modifying the car, but going bad has nothing to do with the strut tower braces or the has kit. Weirdly enough, yesterday I got three people that reached out to me, BMW M2 owners, experiencing the same exact issue as me. This is becoming a widespread issue, guys, for M2 cars. And now it's all starting to make sense. That one forum member on the BMW M2 group that said he got his rotors and his brake pads warrantied, and that his service advisor said possibly this happened at the port. These cars were sitting at the port for three to four months, and during that time, the braking system developed an immense amount of rust, which might have caused them to fail the way that a lot of us are experiencing now. I had a service advisor from Miami dealership that also reached out and said they had three cars they had to warranty for the same issue. And guess what? The pads and the rotors. Not sure if this is eventually gonna be a recall thing, but it definitely seems like this is gonna be some sort of a widespread issue for the people that initially received these M2s, in particular the, the HIA cars. So the only thing I can do from now is I'm gonna drive the M2. It doesn't have any vibration with the G80 pads that we put on there. And if it does come back, then it's probably because of the rotor and because of the waviness that I can feel. I'll make sure I'll keep you guys updated. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I do throw out some small updates on there that don't make it onto YouTube. Like the video to help support the channel. It really does make a difference. And subscribe if you haven't already. So if there is an update on the M2, I'll make a video on it and keep you guys informed. Thanks for watching. Until next time.